Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have an all new speed review. So I'm gonna be sharing some thoughts on products that I've been testing out recently. We've got this foundation trifecta that I've been talking about. I have some final thoughts and surprisingly, the one that I thought I was gonna like the most is not my favorite. My favorite, we'll get there, we'll get there. But I've got some new drugstore from Catrice and Elf, the newest palettes from Bare Minerals, the new highlighting stick from Persona Cosmetics, some lipsticks from Urban Decay, and more. So if you guys are new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I upload four videos a week all about cruelty-free beauty. I would love to see you again. And let's go ahead and hop into it. Let's start with the foundations because I've kind of been comparing them to one another. I've been testing them out over the last couple of weeks, like one at a time each day. And uh, like I alluded to, my favorite is not the one I was expecting, but there are three. So first of all, let's start off with the one I'm wearing right now. This is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. It has hyaluronic acid, it is long wearing. I feel like I was living under a rock because apparently this is a super hyped up foundation and I had no idea until I tested it out recently, but this retails for, let me consult my little post-it note I made. This retails for $11 and comes in 20 shades. And I was gonna tell you my shade, but I think it's actually come off the packaging. It would normally be on the bottom, but I don't see a sticker there. So that might've come off. So I'm gonna put that on the screen. One thing I've noticed though, they sent me the same shade in warm and cool. And I kept the warmer one and I gave my roommate the cooler one cause she has a cool tone or cool undertone. But even that one pulls pretty yellow. I would say it's a little bit more neutral. I would not even describe it as cool. And this is quite warm. It is what I'm wearing today. I think it matches just fine, but I do wanna note that. So coverage wise, this is really great. I would say it's a medium buildable coverage, but you can easily get it into full coverage. And I have some scarring on my cheeks right here from some breakouts recently. And this out of all three concealers or all three foundations, this by far, covers them the best, which makes sense. It's supposed to be a higher coverage. However, I think it still looks much more natural on the skin than high coverage foundations typically do. It also has really good wear time. I think it looks just as great at the end of the day as it does at the beginning of the night. And I think it looks pretty natural. Like truly, I don't have any complaints about this, except maybe it's like slightly harder to blend out than the other ones. But I think that's just the fact that it is a higher coverage, so the texture is a little bit different. Now, let's talk about the one that I thought was gonna be my favorite, and that's this one from Bare Minerals. It's their Original Liquid Mineral Foundation. So this, I would describe as a lighter coverage. This comes in 35, no, 30 shades, and it retails for $35. I wear the shade Fair 01. So this, it's supposed to be a liquid version of the Loose Powder Foundation. The Loose Powder Foundation is a holy grail of mine, and I think the Loose Powder is better than this one, but this one is still very beautiful. That being said, the coverage is quite light, so if that's what you're into, you will probably enjoy this, but if you do have some breakouts or redness or just something you want to cover, you're gonna need to layer this up a bit and definitely pair it with a concealer. This is random, but I love the component. You twist it and then it comes up like that and you can pump it out that way. The texture of this is very runny. It's super thin. What I have noticed because it is almost kind of watery, it is a bit finicky with the base that you pair it with. So sometimes with different primers or sunscreens, I can get pilling with this. I would say I get, compared to the other two, I, I don't think I've noticed any pilling with the Catrice not too much with the Urban Decay, but this, I swear, I have to be very careful with what I pair it with or it will be balling up off my face. And I think that's just because the texture is so thin and liquidy. Uh, it also has SPF 20, which is good to give you a little bit of extra coverage, not that you should rely on just that, but a little bit extra is always nice. And the third foundation, and then I'm gonna rank all three, so stay tuned, but the third foundation is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac Foundation. So. This is like part of the Stay Naked line, and you guys know the regular Stay Naked foundation is one of my absolute favorites. So I was really intrigued to try this, but I don't love this as much as I thought I would. I would describe this as just okay, whereas the other two are very good. This is just okay for me. So this, uh, it's supposed to be like a tinted moisturizer, lower coverage product. I would agree with that, I actually think this has higher coverage than the Bare Minerals. This one's pretty sheer. 
I mean, unless you layer it. I wear the shade 30 light, which is a pretty good match for me. This retails for $29, which is surprisingly low, but it comes in 12 shades, which is also surprisingly low. But the price tag did really surprise me because it is a higher end product and also you get 1.1 fluid ounces. So you get a tiny bit more product and it's significantly less than other high end foundations and tinted moisturizers. So one thing you're either gonna love or hate about this is the applicator. It's this little squeezy tube like this. So sometimes I just draw it directly onto my face and then use my fingers to rub it in and then tap over it with a sponge. Or sometimes I will just pump some out on my hand. Well, I guess not pump. I will squeeze some out on my hand and then apply it with my sponge from there. If you want to get the coverage out of this and this, honestly, anytime you're using a light coverage product, what I recommend doing is blending it out with your fingers and then tapping over it with your brush or your sponge. That way you're gonna can maintain a little bit of that coverage because if you try to apply this with just a sponge, you're gonna use up a lot of product because it is thinner, the sponge is gonna absorb it and you're gonna need a build to get that coverage. This is quite dewy, like quite dewy. So depending on your skin type, you might totally love that, but I find that by the end of the day, I am looking shiny in this which does have me interested to try it again in the colder months when I'm quite a bit more dry. But right now I'm like, this is almost a little bit too dewy for me. So I definitely need to set it down with a loose powder. The finish of the Bare Minerals is also quite luminous, but I would say this is more of a natural radiant satin finish, whereas this is like straight up dewy. The Catrice, I would say, is satin leaning matte which is how they describe it, but weirdly based on the name, hydrating foundation wasn't what I was expecting. Okay, so I'm not being as speedy as I'm planning to, but let me break down these. I would say the one I recommend the most is the Catrice. This has blown me away, it's so good. It's the foundation I wanna reach for every single day. And actually out of all three, this has the best packaging. It feels super luxe and high-end. It's a glass bottle, you've got this cute rose gold lid. I love it. Second place goes to the Bare Minerals Foundation. Very beautiful, perfect for every day. And I would say this one is almost undetectable. So if you want to look like you're not wearing any makeup, check this one out. That being said, I still think their powder foundation is better than this one. Like the powder foundation, you just can't beat it. But this is also good. Third place spot. It's not a bad foundation, but it didn't knock my socks off. The Hydromaniac, it's okay. That's my take. It's okay. Ooh, sticking with base products, this is not that new, but I've been testing it out recently and I wanted to throw it in this review. This is a concealer from Pure Cosmetics. I was not expecting to love this as much as I do. This is their Push Up 4-in-1 Sculpting Concealer. First of all, my love for this started with the packaging. It is so much fun to use. You have a button right here to un like to release it. And so instead of twisting, you just push a button and then to close it, you just push it down and it is so satisfying. This has become my favorite part of my morning routine, pushing this button and letting my concealer pop open. But beyond that, it actually looks beautiful and wears very well. Also, it is the concealer that I'm wearing today. I feel like every concealer creases on the under eyes. It's inevitable, they all kind of do that. But this one, I would say, gives me the least creasing out of everything. Like, I'm shocked. And for some reason, I don't know why. I'm sorry, Bare Minerals. This was, or not Bare Minerals, Pure Cosmetics. I'm sorry, Pure Cosmetics, for assuming that this was going to be a bad concealer. I thought this was going to look dry and gross, but it's actually beautiful. It looks natural. It also has pretty nice coverage. I would say like medium buildable coverage. And the shade I'm wearing is... L63. It's almost on the too light side for me. Like I could, like if you're looking for a brightening concealer and you're around my skin tone, you'll like this, but I would almost go with like the next shade down, like slightly darker than this personally, but this is very good. So this retails for $22. It comes in 16 shades and I've been so surprised by this. I like this a lot. Let's talk about the new brow product from e.l.f. This is their Bite Size Brow. It's part of the Bite Size line. This retails for $3 and it comes in six shade variations, like six different palettes. I think that's pretty amazing. I went with the taupe variation. So this comes with two brow waxes and two brow powders. You get one clear, one tinted, and then a light and dark powder. So 
I would say my most reached for out of this is this tinted brow wax. Now, I was almost, I think I was expecting this to be more of a pomade texture, and that's my own fault. I was thinking it would be similar to their old duo that they've had for years. I would say it's a little bit different. It's not as pigmented as that. That being said, though, my gosh, this hair is driving me nuts. That might be a good thing because uh, when I think about like really pigmented brow pomades, I've made a lot of mistakes on my brows with products like that. So I do think this is quite a bit more user friendly because it's not overly pigmented. However, just know that you might need to like build up a little bit. I don't know that you need to run out and buy it, but I think that maybe if you were used to using a brow pencil and you wanna switch it up, I think this is a really great place to start. The nice thing about these little palettes is that this will last forever. You know, brow pencils, unless it's the one in my project pan, if you guys watch that, you know, that's the anomaly. But most brow pencils, you can go through within a few months, whereas something like this will probably last you for a year and it's only $3. So I don't think it's a bad product, but I, I wouldn't say it's changed my brow game. This wax right here, I like to take my spoolie and dig it in and then kind of use it like a soap brow. It doesn't have the best hold in the world when I use it like that but I do think it does a good job putting a little or like adding some texture into the brows that being said I've mentioned before my eyebrows are just so fine that sometimes I think they get weighed down by brow gels and I feel like they don't want to stay up but depending on your brow texture if you find that you normally get a pretty good result with brow gels this might be enough to hold your brows up but for me I still prefer using actual soap over this wax but I think for $3, I'm not disappointed, but it, again, it has not changed my brow game. Okay, I am sad to review this next one. This is the newest launch from Persona Cosmetics. This is their highlighter stick. This is the shade gold. This, it just comes in gold and it retails for $28. So same packaging as the bronzer in the stick format that I actually just decluttered in yesterday's video. This, it's a unique highlighter. And for the right person, for a very target audience, like you might love it, but I don't think it's for me. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to swatch it here, but obviously I'll have close-up swatches of everything like I always do. And the way I would describe this, it's almost like a clear balm with gold flecks in it. And I mean, they say right in the description that it has gold flecks. I will say though, I have noticed when I first applied this, it was a ton of gold flecks. Like it looked it looked bad but now that I'm like I feel like the I feel like I get less gold flecks now it looks a little bit more natural and a little bit less glittery which is a good thing now for the right audience if you like a no makeup makeup look you want to look like you're not really wearing anything this is very good it's very similar to the concept of the um, dewy sticks from Ciate London but I like the dewy sticks a little bit more just because they don't have the glitter particles in them because with this it just kind of leaves those behind and depending on your skin tone that gold might be really pretty but if you're a little bit more fair like myself it's like gold flecks on your cheek like it i don't i don't love it uh if i take this and draw it onto my face it completely picks up my foundation so what i've been doing is i warm it up on the back of my hand and then take my finger and tap it on it's pretty it's natural i could see myself wearing it for like a beach look but I would say out of this entire video, this is the biggest letdown for me. Like I would, I, I don't really love this and I don't really recommend it. Okay, let's talk about this palette. So Bare Minerals just came out with the Mineralist collection and this is the Stoned Wash palette. You saw me test this plus some of these other products out in a recent testing new makeup video. So if you want to see this in action, I'm going to leave that video linked down below. This is actually what I'm wearing on my eyes today. I did a little bronzer in my crease because there wasn't a good like crease shade in here for myself, but I am wearing these three shades today. All I did was a little bit of blue winged liner. I started with the matte blue on most of the lash line and then I used the black to kind of wing it out. And then I went over it all with the shimmery blue just to give it a little bit more dimension. I do like this palette quite a bit actually. It really did surprise me. When you saw me testing it out in that video, I loved the blue look that I came up with. And I would say this is a great palette for someone that wants to wear blue in a very everyday type of way. And I'm, I'm always going to put air quotes on that because like you could wear bright blue every single day if that's your style. But I feel like this is a way to wear blue in a toned down way that's not too intimidating. I would say the shadow formula is kind of what I was expecting where it's not 
overly pigmented, but then again, that's why I feel like it's appropriate for every day. They're very easy to work with. My biggest downside for this palette is that between the six shades, sometimes I feel like I have to reach into another palette to complete the look. That might just be my makeup style that I feel the need to use a crease shade. Like you could totally do a look with just this, but some days I feel like it is missing more of a mid-tone shade, maybe like a taupey gray. I actually would have gotten rid of one of these two blue shimmers because they kind of end up looking quite similar on the eyes and I would have replaced it with a taupe, like a matte mid-tone taupe. But there are a few other color variations in this line, so I liked this. There, that's Tilly, she just hopped into the window to watch some pigeons, but I liked this. But it's not my new favorite palette by any means, but I do think it's good and the looks I've done with it have been very fun. I like the blue, so I would recommend it, but hello. She has me very distracted, but what's next? This highlight from Catrice. This one's not brand new, but I tested it out in that video, so I wanted to share some updated thoughts. It's called the More Than Glow Highlight. Now, this comes in two shades. Unfortunately, I feel like there should be way more than that, but it comes in two shades and it retails for $6. This is a very pretty highlight and I find it to be very adaptable. If you use a very fluffy highlight brush, which is what I used the first time I tried it, you can get a very subtle, diffuse, like buffed out look, like super natural lit from within. But if you use a brush with a little more density to it, you can get a blinding highlight. So depending on your preference, I feel like this really works either way. It can be very easily manipulated to the level of intensity that you want. It has a beautiful rosy undertone. Like I think it's a very good drugstore highlighter option. I don't get as excited about highlighters these days. I don't always wear highlighter these days, but I do think this is a good one. If you're looking for a highlight on a budget, I would check this one out. Okay, the reformulated Vice lipsticks. If you guys have been around for a while, you know the Urban Decay Vice lipstick formula is my tip top favorite. Those have been my favorite lipsticks for years and they were just reformulated. So they come in a few different finishes still the way that they used to. This is the new packaging. Uh, it's okay, but I loved the old packaging. What, I, what drives me nuts about this is that you have to replace the cap the same way. So it is on an angle. So if you put the cap on like the wrong way, you got to try a few times until you apply it like that. Is that a big deal? No, but <laughs> these retail for $19 a piece, which I do think is a good price for a high-end lipstick. And I'm currently wearing the shade Liar, which is a cream finish. You can see this on my lips. I do have on a little bit of a nude lip liner, but this over top. And then the matte finish I have in the shade Art Walk. I would say these are very similar to the original Vice lipstick formula. Like I said, this one is a cream finish. I would say it sits on the lips similar to the old cream finish. I will say though, I find that the matte finish on this is slightly more matte than the old one. So the old ones were in a comfort matte formula. So it was a little more of like a satiny hydrating matte. This is more of a true matte, but it's not as dry as, remember I told you I did not like the Nabla matte lipsticks because those, so dry this is not on that level it's comfortable but not as comfortable as the original comfort mat so i don't know i was actually kind of bummed that they reformulated and repackaged these because i loved the originals but i get it they are now vegan which is fantastic and i do like these and i would recommend them to give some final thoughts on everything the biggest standout for me is the catrice foundation this i highly recommend it i think it is so beautiful I can't stop wearing it. I, I th just think it looks so nice. The biggest surprise for me was the Pure Cosmetics Concealer. For some reason, I didn't think I would like this, but I can't stop reaching for it. And my biggest letdown, breaking my heart once again, is the Persona Highlighter Stick. I don't know what happened. They used to have like my favorite. Every launch they had, I was giving like rave reviews, but some of their recent products just have not been for me. But like I said, I do think there's an audience for this. I just do not think I am that gal, but those are some thoughts. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these products. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me hear your thoughts down below and I will go ahead and see you guys in my next one. Bye.